Welcome to FE Fitness and to our next installment behind nutrition. Uh, joining me today is James Cooper, head manager of nutrition at FE Gym, uh, who oversees all the programs regarding anything to do with diets here at FE Fitness. Alongside James Cooper is Ricky Hall. Hello. How are you, Ricky? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you guys. That's very good to hear. Ricky just came off of a real serious grueling stint. Yeah, um, uh, it's a three month body transformation. I mean, it was, it was hard work. Uh, it was a lot I was putting, but we we got me in the best best shape of my life, and it was it was amazing. Enjoyed it, well. yeah. It was, enjoyed it was really fun. Yeah, I mean, we've done. I've started these before, and I just never never finished them, you know. So for me to finish this, uh, it's a you know massive accomplishment in itself. And we yeah we had really good you know fun along the way, made friends, and it basically like a, a little family to go into. So it's been a uh, really really good journey. I think every time I saw you come down, I think the biggest change was just your. Mental attitude. And oh, yeah, yeah. So obviously, got the physical change and yeah. also the, the mentality of it as well. I mean, I was, I was a lot happier. I am um, a lot more confident, and it was just an all round, all round good feeling. It was great, yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm obviously keeping that up now, and obviously keeping with the diet. That's the important. Keep, kept it up as well. And obviously, we've had exactly. Christmas in, we've had Christmas in between that, so we had a couple of weeks of you know. Bit of naughty food, but yeah, you know, obviously you've got to have a little bit of a <laughs> treat. Yeah, you've got to have a little rascal treat every now and then. Otherwise, you know, you will go mental. So you don't want to. You know, keep that from your diet. You know, you've got to have a little cheat meal every now and again. You know, have a little curry or a pizza or whatever. So it's, it's, it was nice, but yeah. But the free body tra uh, body transformation, super strict. Mm -hmm. But the diet was still quite easy. Yeah, you had quite a lot of food. We only the and quite taste as well. You know, so it wasn't it wasn't that hard. The training was, was the confidence good. you get behind having a sense of control. Yeah. Uh, in, in other words, control doesn't mean deprivation by any means. Uh, I think. Uh, control, in my understanding of that, I don't know if you would agree or not, Ricky, uh, means that standing awareness of when you have to hone things in and also when you can let things be more relaxed and course, enjoy yeah, the finer yeah. things in life as well. Yeah, and after all, we only have one it's life. Just, yeah, it's just balance, so, isn't it? It's a balance and um, being able to, to, yeah, to sort that in your everyday life and, and put that into your daily routine. Routine, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you know, you. Choosing times of deprivation and times of indulgence, I think that is the biggest secret behind going through the Definitely, transformation yeah, that you're able to uh, take from it. But today we're not here to delve into the complete psychology behind Metamorphosis Challenge. Uh, we're actually going to talk about a topic that a lot of people have not quite necessarily full understanding of, that being of protein. Um, and Ricky was very kind enough to volunteer us to ask questions from a couple of his followers and, and people that generally yeah. um, look up to you uh, in the world as well as a role model uh, to give a bit of clear understanding behind what type of protein and all the, all the big questions um, to ask. Yeah, so, definitely. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll start now. I mean, there's a lot of misconception, a lot of myths about protein. So we'll just start it right off about what basically is protein. What's protein? <laughs> so it's um, so pr protein would be um, a bunch of amino acids joined together uh, by polypeptide bonds, um, and they form the form everything in the body. So, uh, uh, but tissue, so nails, uh, which is from your keratin, your hair, um, your skin, your muscles. They make make up everything in your body. They're, okay, they're, yeah. They're, yeah they're, they're, if I had to put yeah. a protein, mm. if I had to give a, a, yeah. a definition of protein, for me, terms, yeah. for me, um, maybe not necessarily the layman's terms, but a little bit more of a sensual way of looking at protein, it's the essence of life. Building blocks. And, and, That's that best way to isn't it? And, and, so yeah. The foundations of... Very much so, because yeah. even if you think about on a, on a cellular level, DNA and RNA are all made up of protein, protein strands intertwined together behind certain coding as to the way we're gonna look one day, the color of our eyes, sure. you know, the color of our hair, the shape of our bodies. And it all comes down to fundamentally to the very basic um, understanding of protein and amino acids and what they actually do and what they are uh, within our body and in the world itself. So definitely the foundation of life as far as macronutrients are concerned. And that's why I normally call it or refer to it as a macronutrient of life. Okay, amazing. Awesome. Protein, yeah. So that's the, that is what is protein and where, where am I finding this protein? Where am I getting it from? Mm. So there's lots of different sources. Um, the main source that people look at is always meat, lean meats, dairy, eggs. But a lot of, a lot of your followers are vegetarian and vegan, right? Vegan, yeah, so I've right been getting a lot of direct messages saying, you know, uh, we've seen your body transformation, it's been amazing, it's, you know, you worked really hard, all that kind of stuff, but I'm a vegetarian or I'm a vegan. Yeah. How can we build muscle using a vegan and diet or vegetarian diet? Yeah, yeah. so I mean, what? I, mean, I haven't got a clue, so. I think to start off Where that topic, go? James, I don't know if you would agree with me, but there are three fundamental amino acids that would generally be deficient in a vegan or vegetarian's diet. Uh, those being tyrosine, 
uh, car a carnosine and carnitine. Mm. Um, and I think if you had the understanding of those amino acids, you would probably un realize the importance of supplementing them into your vegan or vegetarian diet in very small quantities, to be fair, to get the right effect in the body. Um, but these amino acids are very, very important uh, for vegans and vegetarians because they control cardiovascular health as well as brain health, uh, particularly the output of the neurotransmitter, which we call dopamine, which is excitatory. It makes you aware, happy, and feel the sense of accomplishment. Um, so as far as your vegan follow or vegetarian follow is concerned, um, James, I mean, you can definitely structure a well-balanced diet mm. without eating meat. So yeah, so the, ma the main problem with vegetarians or uh, vegan diets is um, that the, all vegan sources are in what we call incomplete proteins. So they don't contain all the eight essential amino acids. But what you do actually is something called mutual supplementation. So rice, give you an idea, so you have rice and beans, both have protein in small quantities, but they're, veg they're vegan sources. Rice is deficient in lysine, which is essentially amino acid, um, and beans are deficient in methionine. So what you do is you have those two together, and then you're given a complete protein source. You have all eight yeah, amino sure, acids. Sure. So you have to be very diligent. When, when someone becomes a vegan, a lot of them will go, oh, I'm just going to be vegan. Uh, but they don't actually think about what they're eating. Mm -hmm. So there are, ways, there are ways to get around it. Plus, there's plenty of other good um, vegan sources nowadays as well. Um, there's, they can um, eat quinoa. But the other one as well is, um, uh, is corn. It's another, yeah, another yeah. Great, great vegetarian source. Uh, they can have um, that's, that's tofu high as well. That's high, protein. high protein, yeah, tofu is high in protein as well. Oh, okay. um, there's plenty of other sources they can have as well, but and also pea, pea protein as well now, mm -hmm. pea and rice protein. The reason quite often in high quality protein powders they have pea and rice again is because pea is deficient in methionine, rice deficient in lysine. You have those two together in a protein powder, so okay. people actually know what they're doing. Create protein powder, those two in. Yeah, sure, so you sure. can you can you can uh, you can get in good shape of being vegan and vegetarian. I think there's a, a responsibility, James, uh, to yes, people yeah. that become vegetarians. There's a lot of a huge movement now in the fitness community for people to have the rage or whatever it may be to become vegan for animal rights or whatever type of moral reasoning mm -hmm. that they've chosen to toward this this movement, which is I completely respect. But behind that one needs to take the responsibility to understand that food yes. sensitivities will definitely rise up from an overabundance of foods coming into the diet that you haven't had access to before. As an example, corn. Uh, or tofu, particularly mm -hmm. tofu, tofu in Caucasian populations from, yeah. from Northern Europe. Um, you know, we just, you know, for the most part, don't necessarily always contain the right type of concentration of en enzyme activity to break that down as a food source. You've never had it before in our so population. creating inflammation and disruption to the immune system. So yeah, so they, so we'll answer the question, yes, they, they can, but they need to be diligent about how they eat it. So there are vegetarian and vegan sources. So you sources. still need to do your... Do your research, research exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you make sure... And just be smart, smart about it. Be smart about yeah. it, exactly. But there are good quality... Back to the quote. They have good quality protein powders out there. Yeah, so, so there is a, a fully vegan protein powder. So I'm, I, I don't know. Obviously. Yeah, there's I'm plenty of companies. Like, well, top of my head, the top one I can think of top of my head is something called Sun Warrior Protein, which is a good quality. Fantastic. Yeah, that's the one we just so there's plenty of protein, 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 rice protein, and pea protein, and fantastic, right? Perfect. And it's a good combination one as well. That's the one I saw. That's, yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the one I think top of my head, which I use in my clients. Very good. They're brilliant. Yeah, that's very good. Cool. But, but behind that also, just what saying, you want to actually test each source of those proteins out. Uh, just to make sure that you don't have the sensitivity mm. toward it. And the mm. easiest and cheapest way to actually do that, besides going for a, a complex blood panel through a biochemist, which is very useful at times, but sometimes you want an immediate window to see what's going on, is choose a protein source, a vegan protein source, as an example, hemp protein or rice protein. Consume that protein source. Wait an hour after you've consumed that protein source. And simply by getting a diabetic blood monitoring test from your local pharmacy, which may cost you 20 pounds, Measuring your before and after glucose readings should give you an indication of whether or not you're having some form of immune system reaction to that yeah. protein. If it's excessively yeah. elevated, you know that that protein source may not necessarily be beneficial to you or your immune system, let alone the recovery from your workouts. So not to put that type of protein powder into your routine. <laughs> and the same thing can be said for meat eaters as well when it comes to whey protein, casein protein, or egg protein, to do that same formulation of test. Oh, awesome. Right, so finally, how often and how much protein should I be having during the day or during the week? Or it depends, obviously, how you know what you want out of your out mm. of your training. Whether you know you're going heavy or you're going toned or losing weight. So how does that? How do you gauge that? So what the, the British Dietetics Association and what we what I learned at university was fifty grams for protein per day, sixty right. grams for a female, sixty grams per day for a male. Um, the, that differs massively for someone who trains. 
because simply we're breaking down more tissue. When we're training, we're breaking down more tissue, we're building more tissue. Mm -hmm. So we need we need more amino acids from the protein. So at a, t at a guess, what, what I would usually do with a client is a safe bet is a gram per pound of body weight. That's a safe okay. starting point. You can change with um, more training, you can change with, um, with uh, someone being more stressed, but a good starting point is a gram per pound. That's what we tend to do, right? Definitely, definitely. But also, have, also having said that, I think it comes down to uh, the reaction someone might have of introducing more protein to their diet. Of course, yeah, they're not used so, to it. So, you know, if someone has had 50 grams of protein for the most part in their diet for many, many years, and all of a sudden, which a lot of trainers and a lot of organizations do hazardly, is throw them up to 170 grams. Now, the problem there is there's a higher concentration of certain amino acids, one in particular, which you mentioned before, methionine, coming into the body. And if the body can't metabolize that amino acid, it increases something called homocysteine in the body, which is extremely destructive to all the organs and also particularly the brain. Heart, CBD. Very, very bad for the heart. So it's not to say that there's a fixed number that everybody should just have. It's a question of gradually building up your protein content, your intake, and seeing how it affects your body. For example, I only consume 220 grams of protein a day. However, a lot of people that weigh 120 kilograms of weight consume double, you know, maybe at least one and a half times that volume. Sure. But I recover effectively. Uh, my inflammation is very, very low. You digest um, well. And I did digest very well and don't have gastro issues. Whereas when I was younger, I didn't understand the complexities behind protein metabolism. Consuming the right amount for me, I had inflammation going across the body, didn't sleep as well and I just didn't train as well. So it's very much individualized. To give you a guideline, one gram per pound, most definitely, but it definitely comes down to if you want perfect results to hiring a professional that understands the human body, like us here at FE Fitness, to be able to see what type of ratios and what type of amounts would best suit you. Sure, and yeah. it affects from your training. Awesome. Well, that's all my questions answered, guys. Thank you so much for your time, and hopefully that's helped yeah, you. Yeah, thank you very much for being today. Brilliant, thank you.